head coach, Bud Grant. And Channel 5 Sports Director, Bob Bruce. Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us here on the Bud Grant Show. Well, the Vikings started off the 1982 season with a bang today, defeating the defending division champs, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 17 to 10. And what a day for the purple defense. A tremendous day. Every time a big play was needed, they came up with it, and that included our player guest tonight, part of that defense, Scott Studwell. Scott, thanks for being with us tonight. A great day for you. And, of course, to my left, as always, to give us an inside look at Viking football, the head coach of the Vikings, Coach Bud Grant. Seeing as Scott is our guest tonight, let's start the show by talking about defense. I felt all along that the offense pretty much would take care of itself this year, that if the Vikings were to be a contender, they would have to improve on defense. And to me, I saw a lot of improvement today. Well, I think we've seen the improvement in our preseason, if, if that's any measuring stick for what we're doing now, and it's carried over into this game. I don't know what their longest run from scrimmage was, but it wasn't very much. They had to resort to throwing the football, and when you do that a lot, uh, you do make errors, and if you can force the team to throw uh, when you want them to throw when, instead of when they want to, uh, we got a chance to make some plays. We got three interceptions. Uh, we pressured Williams all day, but you have a hard time catching him. All you can do is pressure him. You very seldom do you got to corral him to catch him. We did knock down some passes, tip some passes, and that's about as good as you can expect against a great athlete like he is. You mentioned the interceptions. Last year, the Vikings just did not get their share of interceptions and fumble recoveries. You got a big fumble recovery on the punt, and you also came up with the three interceptions. That's a big key in winning football games. Well, you win uh, with offense, defense, kicking, uh, all kinds of things, and our defense uh, uh, has matured a little bit, has grown, and I think has improved. And we've uh, felt this right along, and we've got to continue to go. We'll, we'll meet teams that are a little more diversified than, than Tampa Bay was. Tampa Bay is very strong, rely on Giles and, and uh, Williams so much, and House, who we, I think we throttled pretty good. But we'll meet some more sophisticated offenses, and maybe Buffalo this week will be one of them. Scott, you and your teammates on defense have to be happy with your performance today. You came up with a great interception that we'll see in just a minute. You have to feel good about what happened. Well, there's no question about it. I think... Uh, as Bud said, we're maturing uh, very rapidly as a defensive football team, and we're very excited about this season. Uh, the big plays came today. They might not come next week, but hopefully we'll get at least a couple of them. Uh, but I think we're just getting a, a great amount of effort from everybody. And uh, as long as everybody's just playing their heart out and doing everything they possibly can to, to win the football game, I think we're going to be in great shape. Something else I noticed today is that the punt coverage was really just excellent. Keith Nord did a super job. Greg Coleman, 47-yard average on the four punts that he had returned, only a total of seven yards. That's what you like to see. Yes, I think uh, this is one of the advantages. You talk about advantages of playing in the dome. I think uh, Greg can go in there and say, hey, you know, it's gonna, he knows exactly what it's going to be like. There's no uh, checking the field, checking the wind, checking uh, everything, and worrying about towels to wipe off your hands and your shoes and whatnot. Just go in and kick. And with that kind of coverage uh, that we had today and his uh, hang time, uh, you know, those are the skill things that we can improve on. You'll see, uh, I think, a change this year over the, the years we played outside. Switching to offense, they did put 17 points on the board, but I don't think it was really a banner day for the offense. But maybe there were two reasons that caused that, Leroy Selman and Hugh Green. But I expected a little more. Uh, they're a good defensive ball club. Uh, always, you know, traditionally they built their defense first, and then with the addition of Green, that just kind of made their defense. They moved him around a lot. And he made some big plays, as did Selman. We were just a little bit away. We got two tip balls right at the end that could have put the ball game away for us. One to Achman on a third down play and one to Brewer on a touchdown. Uh, we felt in the end zone. And both were tipped at the line of scrimmage or just as Tommy let go of the ball. Uh, but offensively, we had two good drives, enough you know, to score some points, and our defense held them. A new player on the offense, Tim Irwin, in there at tackle. I noticed today a couple of times when you needed uh, the yard for the first down, you ran right off of him and he did the job for you. Well, Tim is an exceptional uh, uh, case. He came in and filled in tremendous shoes in Ron Yair. He's played has played every down in the preseason and has just developed as a heck of a football player. And now uh, we're running behind Tim Irwin because he did a great job against Stalls today, particularly. And, uh, maybe he's the strongest man in our lead blocking or our fire out blocking on the line now. Tommy did have a little bit of a problem today. Uh, he didn't seem to get enough time in some situations to really get the ball away and find a receiver. Well, they caught us with some, uh, with some stunts and some blitzes and uh, just some good pressure. And Green will run over anybody, and I mean anybody on the football field that you want to put up against him. 
Uh, if you notice, we ran away from Selman and Green all day, <laughs> except on their pre-vet defenses where they moved Green over the tight end wherever he was and tried to stuff Sensor. Just a moment, we'll be back and we'll look at the highlights of today's victory over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when the Bud Grant Show continues. Most people know that Wheelock Whitney is a manager who understands financial numbers. What they don't know is the numbers of Minnesotans Whitney has helped. The numbers he's helped overcome drug and alcohol problems. The numbers he's helped to lead healthier, happier lives. The numbers he's helped find employment. Now Wheelock Whitney needs your help. On September 14th, vote for Wheelock Whitney, a governor who can manage with a heart. The Vikings know it takes skill to do a job right. So does Hardware Hank. He's got skill power tools on sale. Get Skill's 3 8 inch variable speed reversing drill with double insulated construction. Just $32.88 at Hank's. And Hank really cuts it. With this deal on Skill's 7 and a quarter inch lightweight circular saw, only $39.99. When it comes to power tools, Hank's got skill on sale. You've got a lot more going for you with Hank. participating Hardware Hank stores. With Hank. How good is Ford Escort? Just ask an Escort owner. When we asked Escort owners from all walks of life, we found 9 out of 10 would buy Escort again. 9 out of 10. Now that's satisfaction. No wonder Escort is America's best-selling car line. Oh, what about the 10th Escort owner? There's one in every crowd. Save hundreds during Ford's factory authorized clearance sale. Now. I'm going to show you how to make a real sandwich. Okay. First, you got to have all these buttock meats. Put this on, and then some buttock ham. And mm. this slice here. And boy, is this going to be good. Some buttock beef. Finally, a little of this, and my favorite, pastrami. Now you're going to show me how to eat it? Buttock smoked sliced meat. Deliciously lean. Deliciously different. Before we get to the highlights, if you weren't fortunate enough to have a ticket and be at the Dome today, I can tell you it was hot inside. And I want to ask Scott and also Coach Grant how it was, the humidity. It must have just been brutal down on the field. Oh, there's no question about it, Bob. It was just awful. Uh, I think that's probably the hottest game I've played in in quite a long time. And I was just physically spent after the game was over, and I know I wasn't alone. What effect did it have on the game, Coach? Uh, we watched Scott was one of the players we watched very closely. He gives so much in effort, and uh, he was just about at the end. I mean, it was tremendously hot, probably hotter than the other two games we played, but maybe we've hit the hottest we'll ever see it. Hopefully next year <laughs> they'll be air-conditioned, and the hot season is over, and uh, three big, of three sellout events in 36 hours, maybe that won't happen again either. There you have it, Coach Bud Grant. He wants air conditioning, and uh, I'm sure that we probably have it before too long. Let's get to the highlights now. Tampa Bay on the move, Doug Williams at quarterback and the Vikings on defense. Well, this is in the first quarter, and you see some fine defensive play here. They, uh, they tried to establish the running game early. Uh, we pretty well held them up. Uh, Dennis Johnson, there, who's played just, uh, just so well for us uh, uh, since the beginning of training camp. Here you see Scott uh, run through there on a, on a, on a tackle. And uh, really, our defense uh, was swarming all day. We got good hits, uh, uh, good follow-ups. Uh, good movement by everybody. Uh, Williams over the middle, almost an interception. Uh, see, that was Knopf uh, d diving in front there and almost picked up that interception. You see Williams dropping back here. Uh, really, this ball was thrown out of bounds on purpose. Uh, Scott made a good catch uh, on the sideline there. Uh, but that's the kind of pressure and the kind of coverage we had. Tommy, early in the ball game, comes to Ahmad uh, for the uh, five-yard, six-yard game that you get in a little out pattern like that and then gets hit by Green just as he lets the ball go uh, to Tony, who uh, got a sprained ankle early in the ball game. Here you see Darren, and the little the quick uh, burst that you can get around the corner in a you know, play that's uh, uh, don't look, not look like much. You got six, seven, eight yards, uh, something like that. Here Tommy's over the middle. Uh, this time to Tony, sprains his ankle in this play uh, right there, and that bothered him more and more. Finally had to come out of the golf ball game, and Teddy played the balance of the ball game from the fullback spot. Then a, a, a fake handoff, and Teddy uh, takes the ball on a wide sweep, a little kind of a delay play. Uh, this was a drive that uh, we had in the first quarter that uh, uh, got us kind of ahead in the ball game. And then Tommy uh, down here this time to Sammy on the five-yard line. Uh, a little lateral uh, to Akhmat, except there's nowhere to go. Their defense is very quick also. There was a penalty on the play, put the ball on the three-yard line or two-and-a-half-yard line. 
and you'll see that uh, we run the ball on the first down uh, for the touchdown here. If a little fake and handoff to Ricky. We'll take a look at that play on the board and on our wide angle film uh, just a little bit later and show you how that, uh, that worked. Uh, Williams back to pass. Uh, Johnson jumps right in his face, but he still gets the ball off. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't complete, but we should have had a sack, and that's what Dennis is all uh, jumping up and down. Uh, Doug Martin uh, originates the play there, but uh, quick support by the rest of the line, the linebackers, and uh, he's coming out of his end zone. The ball is tipped, and uh, this is Scott's. Uh, this is a super play. Those are the those are the kind of plays that win the ball games for you. Unfortunately, <laughs> we return the favor with a fumble on our next uh, our next play and that really didn't avail of us anything except the uh, emotional pitch that it keeps you at emotional pitch you talked about it all last year uh, you mentioned it a few times during the exhibition games the crowd you wanted them to get into the game make it like houston down in the astrodome well today in the second half it happened well we don't want to make it like anybody we want it to be all just our own crowd and i thought today uh, we saw just great evidence of, our, of what our crowd can do to influence a football game. I thought they got into the game early, as hot as it was. Uh, they got into it late in the ball game, and uh, I think that they helped, particularly in one play that we'll see in the second half that we'll bring up. That's right. It was fourth and two in the fourth quarter, and they, I, Scott, they told you to try to quiet the crowd down. You had to feel a little uh, <laughs> perplexed at what to do. Well, I think it gets a little frustrating, especially for the offense. Uh, but I think it's it's great for us defensively. It's a great uplift for us, and. Uh, we're real excited about the enthusiasm that the, uh, the fans are showing. And the Teddy starts uh, us off here in this uh, this drive uh, with, with a gain. And again, that little short pass to Ahmad on the sidelines. Uh, and then a sort of a Statue of Liberty play, play to Darren. And you can see he'll, he'll outrun anybody that he's even with. You've got to come from somewhere else in the field to get in front of him to, uh, to make the play. Uh, uh, you'll see here he'll come out here with a, a bootleg and watch uh, Darren uh, catch the ball. Just a fine catch right out in front of him. And then uh, those quick feet uh, get you the extra yards, and this uh, put us in, you know, in that scoring position. And then uh, uh, when you're in there, there's a many, many plays available to you. And here you see Tommy come over an audible uh, for Sammy Wright uh, in a quick post pattern. As it looked like we were going to catch them in a blitz, and uh, we had kind of had that set up going into the game. And it's good to see something that you think is going to work uh, work for you and provide you with a touchdown. Uh, from that point on in the ball game, we had it was all defense, and you see John Turner uh, with his interception, uh, really a fine play. Uh, once again, uh, we really uh, didn't take advantage of this. The, the, the game could have been 28-31, you know, uh, uh, to three, but uh, we were not unable to capitalize there. And now they're down in our end of the field again, and you see the crowd noise there. And uh, I don't think they got things uh, straightened out. Uh, as there were two or three stoppages of play, finally uh, uh, the pass was incomplete. And I think that uh, crowd gave our defense a big lift and also a little bit of rest. Uh, you see the pressure, but the uh, one play that they did uh, uh, execute very well against us a couple of key occasions uh, was a screen pass. And we're going to have to get better at uh, covering the screen because certainly other teams see that and they, uh, they give you what works against you. And here's Williams, the only run of the day. Uh, didn't see, he seemed a little more tentative than I've seen him running with the ball in earlier years, and probably that's with experience. Here, this is a design play where he uh, pins the end and comes outside, uh, throws the ball. They did this three or four times. Their defense adjusted after this. The next few times they tried it, uh, I thought we contained it pretty well. Uh, but here you see Williams again come on the outside, find tight end coming across. Uh, well, was just an excellent football player, a uh, good speed, hard to cover him. And here's a, a big play. Coleman gets a fine kick, good coverage, uh, drive them deep. And uh, the first man down makes the pressure, and then we get some hits, and finally the fumble. And again, this provided us with the field goal, which became a very important uh, uh, play in the ball game. You see Darren here, not much there. He just follows Wes Hamilton, uh, dives in there. Doesn't look like much, but that's a five-yard five play. Anytime you get outside, if he breaks through there, he could, uh, he could be gone. Uh, they tried to jump and block like we do, but uh, they don't have anybody to compare with Sensor and Matt Blair in that department. So we get the field goal, give you 17 points. Here's a big play by Matt Blair. I mean, Willie Teal gets the touchdown, but Matt, uh, with his size, got up and tipped the ball. And that was, it was the ball game. It was just over a minute to go. And those are the big plays that win ball games for you. You can win them on defense as well as offense. 
you see how happy everybody was, and it doesn't show the bench, which is which just the same way. Matt, Matt could, when he, when he retires from football, could be a third base coach in baseball. With all those hand signals, everything he makes, he well, just goes crazy. He works so hard, it feels good when you make a play like that. Hey, in just a moment, we'll be back, and the coach will diagram one of the big plays from today's win over Tampa when the Bud Grant Show continues. Once women who were perfectly happy with Baldy and Viva tried Bolt, they liked it best. Whatever the mess, Bolt's best. A Wizard of Odyssey. What video game are you up to now? Oh, I'm up to my eyeballs in a mine shaft with Odyssey 2's new video game, Make Axe Beat. Make Beat, escape up the ladder, smash the boulders. Now, now, grab the elusive key to go. On the keyboard, you change mazes to make the mine shaft even more menacing. Pick Axe Beat from Odyssey 2, where the keyboard is the key to great and challenge. $159.95 at Donaldson's with $15 factory rebate till October 1st, total $144.95. Around the world, there's just one thing we do. Just one, senor. We make the world's favorite chicken. We make it especially for you. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do it right. No other fried chicken is all right. We pure it by hand. What a lovely sight. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. It's the runaround. A little dance made popular by so-called bargain building supply stores that make you run from one end of their warehouse to the other just to find what you need. When you get tired of the runaround, come to Knox. We have lower prices than those other guys. We also have the Knox answer booth to help you find what you want fast. Knox. Good prices, good answers. Owens Corning fiberglass insulation now just 21 cents per square foot plus factory rebate. The American Lung Association of Hennepin County invites you to join in on the season's final test, the Tri-State 300 Bicycle Challenge, a rigorous three-day, three-state, 300-mile bicycle ride through Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Iowa, September 10th, 11th, and 12th. For more information, call 871-7332. When it comes to plays in a running offense, one of my favorites is the misdirection. It, it's so deceptive, in it, and it accounted for a touchdown today for the Vikings. Well, it's on the goal line, and, uh, you know, you have very little room to work. Uh, we're on the three-yard line. Remember, the end zone is there, so everything is a little more crowded, a little tighter. Your line is a little tighter. Uh, here we ran Ricky on a touchdown, and the misdirection you're referring to is we take Teddy and run him right in, right in that area. Ricky will take a step and come back underneath here, and Tommy will come around here and hand to Ricky some key blocks here. First of all, we'll pull Steve Riley out here. That'll influence the end and take care of this man. And then we'll pull Wes Hamilton this way. He will pull, he will block this end who'll be coming across. You see there'll be a fine block in that area. Uh, we'll block down in here, we'll block down in here. Uh, Teddy will try to pick this man off as this man will try to hit him, but he'll be in the inside. Teddy will eventually have to fill that hole. Uh, Ricky will come bouncing in here. The key block, Bob Brewer has to get inside of that man, and you'll see he'll catch that linebacker right there. He'll catch him leaning this way with the direction of Teddy's flow and gives Brewer a chance to make that block, and you'll see Ricky will bounce in the end zone. It'll be very clean as you see it on the film uh, that we get with the wide-angle lens. Here as we're lined up, uh, this is uh, Teddy here, Ricky here, uh, Joe Sensor on the, on the wing. And as the play starts, Teddy will go in there, turn around and hand back to Ricky. And he gets through there out very clean. But if you'll watch, uh, watch Wes Hamilton here. He'll be the pulley man, make that block. I will let this run through. We'll now have a shot of the end zone, uh, doing the very same thing. An end zone shot will give you a better uh, picture of just how that hole does open up from back here. Remember. Uh, this is a shift now. Move over here. This will move alignment over. Uh, watch Wes Hamilton here. Watch Steve Riley pull. Uh, and, there's, and there's the hole. Key block. Wes Hamilton in here. Jim Huff blocking down on the tackle. Riley pulling. Brewer. Take another look at Brewer's block. A very key block. Has to get inside a, the green. We do that by influencing here. Key block right there. And that gives Ricky the shot uh, into the end zone. Uh, well-executed play and uh, resulted in a touchdown. Oh, and everything works like that. It looks so easy. Well, it's, that's where the satisfaction in coaching comes, when sometimes these plays work and uh, you feel good about it. 
In just a moment, we'll be back. We'll talk more with Scott Studwell. You study up, and you know you'll want Rudy and Marlene. They care, and they know how. The Perpich Johnson team. Together, we will make Minnesota work again. The Green Mill restaurants are known for their award-winning pizzas. And the Green Mill also takes considerable pride in their expanded bill of fare, including fresh seafood, soups, generous salads and sandwiches, and reasonably priced beverages. But it's still the smiles produced at the Green Mill that they are particularly pleased about. Not many people will read all 100 proposals of Warren Spanis' Minnesota plan. I have. It is both comprehensive and specific. It gives Minnesota a fresh start. There are two good DFL candidates for governor, but only Warren Spanis offers both the plan and the proven ability to put it to work. We in the Twin Cities need Warren Spanis to get things back on track. Warren Spanis for governor. How good is Ford Escort? Just ask an Escort owner. When we asked Escort owners from all walks of life, we found 9 out of 10 would buy Escort again. 9 out of 10. Now that's satisfaction. No wonder Escort is America's best-selling car line. Oh, what about the 10th Escort owner? There's one in every crowd. Save hundreds during Ford's factory authorized clearance sale. Now. and enjoy the great outdoors or do you want to walk through a tranquil area or bike through nature's beauty call the park reserve district at 473-4693 for more information on trails let's talk a little bit more now with our player guest scott studwell and scott we'll take a look at some of the highlights of your play today it was a busy day for you and an exciting day well there's no question about that uh, i think we spent most of the fourth quarter on the field today, and the offense gave us a great, a great blow in the third quarter with the long drive that they had. But uh, we spent the majority of the fourth quarter on the field, and uh, I know we were exceptionally tired. But uh, overall, I think uh, we, we had a great, great effort today defensively, and if we can continue to play that play, way. Huh? Yeah, just another play. I'm, How many interceptions did that last year? None. None. I've got <laughs> two more than I already had all last year, so... We picked up the pace a little bit. Talking about the defense, great play both by the linebackers and the men in front of you. How important is the play of the defensive lineman in front of you to what your reactions are and what your job will be? Well, I think our, our, our front four people, are actually our front three people in the three four, are just playing exceptionally well for us. So they're putting the heat on the passer, which we need. Uh, for our coverages as linebackers and defensive backs and uh, they're doing a great job for us this year they're all playing exceptionally hard and uh now that we've got a, we've got a year under our belt with the three four defense we're learning to play with each other a little better and uh, uh if if the effort like i said earlier if, if we keep up the effort that we're putting forth right now we're going to have an exceptional year defensively well i mentioned earlier in the show that, that my contention and folks come up to me all the time how are the vikings going to do and i said if the defense comes through they're going to be a real good football team. Well, there's no question about it. I think uh, if we can get the ball to our offense, we've got such an explosive offense, and uh, uh, we do so many things offensively uh, that as, as long as we can get them the ball, I think we've got a, a great opportunity to win it all this year. And it's, uh, uh, we've got a lot of pressure on us defensively, but uh, our main job is to get the ball back for the offense. When you came to the Vikings, you didn't just walk into a starting job. You had to work your way in. Tell me about the learning process What's different about Scott Studwell now that makes him a starting inside linebacker than the Scott Studwell when he first joined the Vikings? It's got to be more than just experience. Well, uh, experience plays a, an awful major role in, in my play right now. Uh, when I first came in the league six years ago, uh, I was very green, like we all were. And, uh, but I played under one of the best linebackers that have played the spot, Jeff Seaman, and Jeff probably did as much to improve my play as anything. Uh, anytime I had a question or a problem, I could always go to Jeff and ask him and he was more than willing to help me which I think was just uh, uh, just great and uh, he probably did as much for my play as anybody and uh, the maturity has come and, uh, and I'm playing I think probably better than I have played in the past I hopefully hopefully I think I have been anyway but uh, you play a position linebacker where the guys are 
they have a reputation of being mean and, you know, the reputation of Butkus and Nitsky. And did you have any linebacker, when, uh, you know, uh, one of the all-time greats that you wanted to style your play after? Well, I don't, I don't really try and style my play after anybody. I think as a, as a kid growing up, uh, the only team we ever got was the Chicago Bears. So naturally, I grew up watching Dick Butkus play. But uh, I'm not a Dick Butkus. I'm just Scott Stubble, and I like to play the way Scott Stubble can play. And that's just as hard as I can possibly play. And uh, uh, if some people would like to, uh, uh, compare to me, compare me to some of those great linebackers, that'd be super. But uh, I just like to do my job and play as well as I can possibly play. Well, now you have to prepare for the Buffalo Bills. And, Coach, I have to ask you about uh, the Bills. They beat one today over Kansas City, 14-9. to The big story there is that Joe Cribbs is no longer with Buffalo, at least for now, because of his contract holdout. Well, I hope he can hold out for another three or four <laughs> days because he is a, uh, he's a game-breaker, super player. They got Butler back, and uh, they got a good football team, good defensively. I think the 60s, 80s, got to go all the way to Southern Iowa. And they'll probably be gone by the time you get there. Because that cold changed drastically how you prepare? No, we'll use a lot of the same things. But we have some things already set aside for Buffalo. Uh, but they've got the same problem. The only difference is we've got to travel Wednesday night to get there and spend all day Thursday. Tough playing night games in somebody else's backyard. Uh, but we've done well on you know the occasions we've had to play Monday and Thursday games. What about injury report? Uh, Tony Galbert sprained an ankle. Uh, sprained an ankle. Uh, Terry LeCount sprained an ankle. Uh, Wes Hamilton sprained a toe. Uh, Joe Sensor uh, got some banged up ribs. We held Joe out. Um, but there may be some other things that come through, but not of the serious variety. The things that might keep somebody out Thursday, but then again, we might look for them all to be back also. Tomorrow night on Monday Night Football on ABC, Pittsburgh at Dallas, you get a chance to scout the Cowboys before they come back up here and play the Vikings. Well, Dallas playing at home, opening game, uh, big rivalry, all the hoopla-la. Uh, you know, Dallas is picked for the Super Bowl, and I think that's an advantage. I really do. I think that keeps your team at a high pitch, high level of performance. And I look for Dallas to really come on strong in the opening game. That's tomorrow night on Channel 5, Dallas at, playing Pittsburgh in Dallas. And, of course, we want to remind you, special time this week for the Bud Grant Show. Live Thursday night at 7.30, it'll be the Vikings versus the Buffalo Bills here on KSTP-TV. And then Friday at 7 o'clock, we'll have the Bud Grant Show with the player guest highlights, interviews, and more. So join us next Friday night at 7 o'clock and, of course, 7.30 Thursday night for the Bills versus the Vikings. Until then, a lot of thanks to Scott Studwell after a long day coming in and spending some time with us. And, of course, as always, my thanks to Coach Bud Grant. We'll see you next Friday night. This has been the Bud Grant Show with Minnesota Vikings head coach Bud Grant and Channel 5 sports director Bob Bruce. Clothing for Bud Grant and Bob Bruce has been provided by Gokies, with locations in St. Paul, the Galleria, Wyzetta, and Rochester. This program has been a presentation of KSTP Television Sports. If 250,000 people are watching this commercial, 5,000 of you have diabetes and don't even know it. See your doctor. Your life might depend on it. Minnesota.